Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner. We are back again for another Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, season 13, episode 17. And this is called um, Saray and Separations. Um, Soiree and Separations. So um, this was the season finale, so let's get into it. So, um, the episode does start with Kyle and Erica at the So High football stadiums. This is where the LA Rams play. Um, and also where, um, Kyle did her direct TV commercial, um, a while back for like the Real Housewives and whatnot. So anyway, but they're at the stadium, um, for basically event planning for Kyle's annual white party that her and Mo have, um, historically threw together. Pretty much almost every season of Beverly Hills, or and I don't know if they started it even before that, but this is like their thing that they do. And Kyle is there at the event because she's actually going to be the guest performance um, for it. And um, Erica's basically treating this kind of like a dress rehearsal before her Vegas residency. And then we also see Kevin Lee, which we've also seen Kevin Lee before because she actually, he, sorry, wow, she, he actually is also LVP's event planner. And so, yeah. So Kyle decided to go with LVP's event planner. And that's kind of where the episode starts. From there, we the next scene we have um, Sutton and her daughter, um, Porter. They're meeting with uh, Martin, who is um, Sutton's jeweler, to get some jewelry together. Um, Sun's using, using this as basically a way to celebrate the, um, victory she's been having so far as far as like keeping her store open and finding her new independence and finding her new confidence that she has very much been lacking <laughs> for well, most of the season she's been on the show and probably even before that. So she, um, decided she's going to treat herself and her daughter to some jury. And it was a very beautiful scene because we actually see Sun opening up to her daughter and providing advice to basically never lose herself and um, always have her independence. So fall in love, do all the things, but just always never lose yourself and keep your independence and keep working hard. Don't ever let a situation change that about you. And eventually you can buy me some jewelry. <laughs> so that's kind of how it, um, the scene was, it was really, really cute. And the jewelry that they purchased and the jewelry they were looking at was gorgeous. It was give, definitely giving Beverly Hills fabulosity. Um, son ended up buying like these sapphire earrings that she actually ends up wearing at the white party. And then um, her daughter, Porter, also got some earrings, but not, um, I think they're like diamond earrings, like more like just regular diamond earrings. But yeah, that's where things ended there. So next is the day of the white party. And the budget for the party was, <laughs> wow, $400,000. And it was beautiful. The party is like in the middle of the stadium. And <laughs> Kyle's name is just in the middle of the dance floor which was what Kyle didn't want, according to her. But there it is. It's right there, even though it's not really her party. It's supposed to be like her and Mauricio's party. But there we go. And from there, then we just see a mini montage of pretty much everyone getting ready. So we have Amory and her husband deciding what he is going to wear. Clearly, he's going to wear white, but it's just a matter of what white is he going to wear. Um, Garcelle and her glam discussing... <laughs> Denise Richards' feedback regarding uh, Erica getting a residency and the fact that she, she didn't know that Vegas residencies allow lip singing. <laughs> um, and it won't be the last time that she hear Denise mention that um, because not so much of a surprise because it is a season finale. We see almost everyone here at this party. Anyway. So then Erica is at the stadium practicing and also questioning why is Kyle's name in the middle of the floor? And then we also see in the next scene, still the mini montage of Crystal with her glam as her husband's trying to locate his white jacket for the party. Next, we see that Dury and PK are FaceTiming each other. He still is in London and it has been 25 days. So basically almost like four episodes, three to four episodes in a row that PK has been gone. 
and Dorit is annoyed at him and she's really she doesn't know how she feels about it because she's he keeps saying he's going to change but the actions are definitely not there he's still acting pretty much very much the same as before and she's equal, she's really annoyed because he's not going to be at the white party even though he knew about it it was on the calendar and he's not going to be there and she and he knew according to Dorit he knew how important this was to her and yeah he's still going to be in London so um Porky Porky ah, wow Porky <laughs> Not poor gay, Dorit, uh, <laughs> hangs up as her glam arrives to get her dialed up. So that's kind of how that ended. Um, and then we have Mo and um, Alexia's boyfriend. They arrive at the party because it's the day of the party. And they arrive first, um, you know, as part of like the Kyle family and crew. Um, both Kyle and um, Erica, they're already there and they're getting glammed up. And then um, the first of the housewives to arrive is Crystal along with um, Rob. And then Sun arrives next, Garcelle. And then ev pretty much everyone looks beautiful. We see that Faze there, um, Jeff Lewis, Camille, um, Crystal's brother Jeff is there, um, Cynthia Bailey's there. I forgot um, Kyle's friend, who's now the e correspondent. I forgot his name, but he's also there. And um, Kyle and her daughters do make their entrance. At first, everyone missed it. It looked like everyone was missing it. Um, and then goes commercial break, and then we go from there. After the commercial break, it turns out everyone saw it. It was really, really cool. Because they all, as they came in, we have like kind of like the Vegas, like showgirls, like in all white, kind of just like there. And then we also have the Rams cheerleaders and the mascots there just kind of just like boop, 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 you know, celebrating their entrance. So that was their entrance. Um, and then everyone pretty much at this party is in good spirits. Um, Denise arrived as well. And child, the way Denise has been a flop this whole entire season, even as a guest, I don't see her coming back. Um, because Denise is wearing a pink jacket when it's supposed to be an all white party. And I'm sorry, that's a pet peeve of mine. What are you doing? And um, also her husband, who also is there with her, is wearing this baseball cap, and it's kind of weird, and it's also not white. So it, again, it's an all-white party. <laughs> um, anyway, so then Dorit notices, but doesn't want to call it out due to what happened before. Um, and it pans back to when Dorit was trying to tell Denise at um, the weed event, at Kyle's weed event, that like her jacket was upside down. So she didn't even want to try it again. She was like, you know what, whatever. <laughs> um, and then um, basically Garcelle's talking to Sutton and asking about Steve. We find out from Sutton that she's deciding to move forward from having, um, from, from dating him and, um, and after having some clarity of what exactly she wants. So apparently and she and so sudden in her confessional she does think uh, Ale alexandria um the matchmaker for kind of helping her get past that first date bump that she had and helping her with her confidence and really it sounds like from like what sun said that was really all she needed she just needed some confidence to get back out there and so she has it now and she's not really even though steve's cute she's not really about it so she's moving forward and she wants to focus on her businesses. So, understandably so. And she wants to also pretty much bask in her new independence that she wasn't appreciating before. Um, and I, I totally get it. That's where I'm at right now, too. I'm just like, you know what? We're going to stay single, work on ourselves, and then we'll get back on the dating horse shortly. But anyway, so then Kyle and Mo are clearly still having problems um, over as they're talking to each other, they basically kind of get a little bit, not really obviously into it, but they kind of, Kyle's annoyed that Mauricio wasn't aware where exactly the party was going to be at in reference to the um, SoFi Stadium. Because one of most friends joked that it was, maybe it was going to be the parking lot. And Kyle, we show a scene from the previous, we show an unseen footage scene where 
Kyle literally says where this party is going to be at. So, and based off of Kyle's personality, it doesn't make sense why he would think he's in the parking lot. You can tell that Kyle's is done. <laughs> it's, it's just really, it's wild. But anyway, Denise, Camille, and um, son, they ask about what is Erica performing? Because we find, um, I think they find out that, Denise finds out that Erica's performing. And this is where Denise shades her about her lip singing. And she does it the whole entire time while she's performing too. It's just like, Denise, let it go. Let it go. Your beef was with Lisa Renna, who's not there. And both times you had the chance to confront Erica and you weren't ready for it. And I don't think you have it in you to be ready for it. It, you just, it just isn't you. So just let it go. Anyway. Um, so then we see Erica and she's praying and reflecting on the past couple of years as she's getting ready for the performance. And then we see that Kyle goes on stage and presents, presents Erica to the stage. All right. So then Erica is on the stage and she's definitely lip syncing. Um, but she didn't mess it up. The routine was cute. And for what Erica does, it, it, it was fine. Um, Erica does greet her and she's crying, just saying how proud she is of her. And then this is where we start getting the closing Real Housewives thing that you get at the season finale so erica's red um she has um she had success with her residency in vegas and now she's playing on more music music videos for 2024 and, appa and app apparently betting on a um betting on the blonde worked something like that um dorit um so that for dorit it shows that dorit finally um is happy, I guess, because after all this, PK gets home from London after 39 days. He was gone for like a month and a half, basically. <laughs> and Dorit is reflecting on her and PK and if they're going to work. So right now, she's still willing to give it a go, but they still have problems. Um, and that's kind of where they end there. But then it also shows here that the distance between Kyle and Dorit is actually the real T, the real issue. They haven't spoken to each other since December 2023. And if you could tell by the how this show has been filmed, I think the season finale was supposed to happen a little bit after Mother's Day. And then clearly more happened afterwards um, because this seems like a short episode and we know why. Um, but yeah. That's what that is. Um, hold on. Okay. So, sorry if you hear that noise in the background. Um, I'm on the main street, so there's that. <laughs> anyway, um, so we have then Anna Marie and um, Crystal. We find out they haven't talked to each other since the all-white party. And really, it just shows that Anna Marie has retired from giving medical advice at cocktail parties. They gave her not much because she didn't give us a thing. That's how that ended for her. Uh, Crystal, they show that Crystal is accepting that Jeff lives in Thailand part time and has a new BFF, has a new girlfriend. And they show a scene where Jeff has finally had the conversation with both Crystal and her mom about how proud, you know, he is of both of them. But it's time for them to, you know, let her go. He's a man, which get that. And then Crystal does finally admit to Rob that he was right. Um, and then we see that Garcelle is um, basking in her professional parenting and um, grandparenting wins, especially for her award that she actually won for Black Girl Missing. Um, and then they actually show her getting the reward. So that's pretty cool. Sun and sun fashion randomly trips and falls <laughs> while she's dancing at this all white party. And then we see here for Sun that she's continuing to grow her brand while adjusting to having her son full time. She's putting her dating life on hold and focusing on Santos. And then they do a group shot and then ah, record scratch one month later. Oh, it goes to one month later and then we see the Anna Marie's um, at her pool in her backyard with her kids. Dorit is charging her cell phone at home. Garcelle is at home get, and then she gets the alert. And the news breaks 
out regarding Kyle and Mauricio's separation. The People's Magazine article. And Crystal and Rob are reading the article from People's Magazine. Dorit and P PK are talking about via FaceTime because PK's in London yet again. <laughs> um, and PK and Dorit are both shocked due to the lack of indication of there being any problems. Um, because according to them, they were really, really close to Mo and Kyle. So I, this is good. We're going to, man, this, this reunion is going to be interesting. Let's just say that because I feel like Dorit is going to have some words. But anyway. So, um, while this is happening, then we see that Anne Marie and, um, Marcellus, um, her husband, they're talking about it and she's asking, did the article come from Kyle? And see, this is where we see that <laughs> Anne Marie and Kyle are probably not going to be good anymore because she just threw Kyle under the bus randomly here. So yeah, anyway, and, um, but Rob, who's Crystal's husband, is kind of asking the same thing. Who leaked this article? Um, not really saying that Kyle did, but according to him, he thinks Morgan, Morgan Wade did. Um, and Crystal's like, wow, you are treating this like this is a film. And he's just like, it kind of is. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> he's like, it's giving the movie to me. <laughs> I was like, Rob, I love you. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love that. <laughs> Cracks me up. Oh my gosh. Rob is just like one of my favorite house husbands. I ain't gonna hold you. Like it he created the Lion King. Anyway. <laughs> so um Garcelle and Son are FaceTiming each other talking about it. And Fancy Drew is on the case. And Son thinks that Kyle was lying to them the whole entire time. And this is probably where Kyle and um, Sun were no longer cool right here and there. According to Kyle, I think on Sun's case, she saw what everything that Kyle was saying, saying about her and all the scenes and finally, hopefully has wised up. Um, because again, this reunion, I, I can't wait. It's going to be good. It's going to be good anyway. <laughs> so then we see one day later, Kyle according she's we're at we're at kyle's place and according to kyle she did not leak the story and mo is focusing on who did that while kyle's just trying to like make sure her family's okay because apparently the daughters didn't know um and they're mortified by the news um erica goes to visit kyle and kyle opens up to erica about everything that's been going on for the most i mean kind of but not really. Kyle still is doing this thing that she's been doing the whole entire season where she's like talking in code, like she's not getting everything she needs, but not really saying what, what the T is. Um, she said it was a whole bunch of things. It wasn't just one thing. And I'm saying this because one of the last things she says in her final confessional is contradictory to what she's been saying this whole entire time. And I'll, we'll, we'll get to, we'll get there soon. Cause this is almost the end episode, actually, which, again, that's part of the issue. You held on to this information because I'm sorry, I'm on Team Sun when it comes to this. You knew you weren't good. You knew this as well as lean to. You literally pulled a Robin. I'm sorry, but you did the same thing Robin did. The only difference was Bravo was not going to let you do what Robin did because no one else is going to be allowed to do that kind of thing again, I think. So, yeah. Anyway, so one week later, we see that Mo and Kyle are at their house and they basically have a family meeting with the daughters, um, including Farah. So she comes to and they basically talk about the marriage um, and they both state that they're not going to be getting a divorce. It's just a separation. And Mo and Kyle are not agreeing on even like how they where they stand on this because Kyle the whole entire time is the one who's talking but she's saying like we 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 and Mo at one point chimed in he's like no mm -mm, that's not me and it was in reference to 
And this is kind of where I'm, my feeling is on this. And, and this is just me as a viewer. I've never been um, married, so I don't want to even speak when it comes to that. But as a viewer, I just really, really wish Kyle would just be honest about things here because she's still presenting even to her children that it is their decision. It's not their decision. It was her decision. Every single episode, including even this episode, has made it very clear that this separation was her decision. She's been over him this whole season. It's been so obvious. But she keeps saying, we, 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 we. And it's like, no. And, and really, she, it, they're going to find out. <laughs> like, you know. It's, to me, it's just like they're going to watch the show and see that this was a you decision. So I just don't understand why. I, I get why they hid it from their kids because they said they were trying to protect her, their children. But now that it's out there, let's just say it all. I mean, it may be behind the scenes she did. But the fact that because um, Mo has a show on Netflix and the trailer on that show was more revealing of what was going on versus this. Yeah, Kyle, I'm kind of over that. That's not really OK. But anyway, like I so basically I have to watch the first episode of Mo's show on Netflix to get the tea on what's really going on. It's just giving very exploitive. Like if this is really your life, you're kind of exploiting your children and their pain and whatnot, which is kind of not really OK. Anyway, so I and I just really feel bad for her, her children, especially Portia, because Portia's st like still in her teens and still has to try to figure this all out because she actually starts breaking down and crying. And then um, in the final confessional, she actually does state that it was something that Mo did that caused the trust to be broken and there's no coming back from it, according to her. So. All the way up until the final confessional, you basically are lying of the reason for the divorce, the separation. So, and then basically after that, we see that Kyle and Kathy, they reconcile at Whitney's wedding, which is Kim's daughter's wedding. And Kyle and Mo are still separated. And that is how the season ended. Child, that reunion's gonna be good though. I'm looking forward to the reunion. Um, but Kyle, 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 Kyle. I don't even know how I feel about it just because it was very much underwhelming about how it went. Because by the way, all this news was only like maybe like the last 15 minutes of the show. It wasn't even this the the last episode. Sun's right. <laughs> that's how I feel about it. Sun's right. Anyway, um, and that's not because I'm not, it's not just because I'm a Sun fan, but Sun just be calling it like it is. But anyway, that does conclude this um, season and episode of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And I don't know how many parts the reunion is going to be. I'm a, it's definitely going to be at least two parts. I hope it's not three. But anyway, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melanin Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.